Hi, this is Lori, and welcome to my series on the Pico W. In this episode, we're going to learn about passive buzzers and how to transcribe sheet music to buzzer music. We'll be creating a passive buzzer jukebox over the next two episodes. Let's get started. There are two kinds of buzzers in most beginning electronic kits, an active buzzer and a passive buzzer. The active buzzer is pretty simple to use, and here's a picture of one. Um, you just apply some voltage to the pin, and you'll get a sound. And usually people will use these in projects where they need a beep or uh, a buzz kind of sound that uh, maybe it's an alarm or something like that. Um, that's what we'd use an active buzzer with. For passive buzzers, we can use those to actually generate different tones or notes, and we can actually make uh, some music. may not sound super beautiful, but uh, it's kind of our own little music maker. And I found the best uh, description at the Adafruit site on one of their learning pages about these and how they work. So uh, they have this Piezo crystal in it. Um, so you can kind of see here's a diagram of the passive buzzer kind of separated out. So here it is. And uh, it changes shape when we apply voltage to it and uh, it, it, uh, the crystal pushes against it and uh, has it push out of the housing here. There's a little hole you can see, and it creates a pressure wave uh, that we'll pick up with our ears as a sound. And if we change the frequency, we can change the note that we're hearing. And uh, so I guess this all seems a little bit of magic to me. Physics wasn't my best, uh, best subject, but uh, that's uh, basically how they work. So we'll need to learn how to use pulse width modulation, or PWM, so that we can vary uh, the pitch of our passive buzzer. We're going to use pulse width modulation to create the different tones from our passive buzzer. With pulse width modulation, we uh, usually talk about a cycle, which is uh, one uh, period, the time for one cycle to go by, and this is all usually happening very fast in milliseconds. Um, and then we're going to switch our pin, giving us the voltage from high to low very quickly. And how long we leave it high versus low for one cycle is called the duty cycle. So in this case, we're going to have it for the one cycle, we're going to have it at 50% uh, the time at high and 50% of the time at low. For the varying the notes, what we're going to really control in this case is the frequency, and that is, you know, sort of how many cycles we're going to do per second of our pulse width modulation duty cycle of 50%. In, uh, when you look it up, you'll find that uh, the notes are described by the different frequencies. So, for example, uh, A at the lowest point on the piano. Uh, it has a frequency of 27.5 cycles per second. Um, so that actually turns out to be a period of uh, 0.036 uh, seconds. Now when we go to um, the highest note, uh, a C in the eighth octave, that's what the eight means. So that's the, the zero octave, the fourth octave, and the eighth octave. In the highest note that a piano can play, C, C8, the frequency you can see is much higher, um, going to get much more uh, cycles per second, so 4,186.01. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to vary how fast these uh, uh, cycles go to create the different sounds. Here's a chart that I found out on the uh, internet from mixbutton.com that uh, gives all the uh, notes and the octaves and frequencies. So here you can see there's the zero octave all the way up to the octave eight, and then here's the various notes. Um, now if you know a little bit about music, you'll know it goes uh, um, in a series of notes. Uh, usually people start it at C, D, um, E, F, G, A, B, and then back to C again. So it kind of rotates through these octaves. And you'll also notice there are something called C sharp and D flat. And notice that those are the same. So something that's a C sharp is the same as something that might be written as a D flat. 
that's important um, when you're looking at actual music uh, sheets and you want to do this transcription to put your favorite uh, song into buzzer music, you'll need to pay attention to that so that you can always um, figure out what frequency to use when you have these sharps or flats in, in your music. We're going to use a dictionary, a Python dictionary, to uh, set up our notes with our frequencies. So if you remember, we've used the dictionary once before. Um, dictionaries are a way to kind of create a lookup table. So we're going to have every note paired with its frequency. So kind of taking that table we saw on the previous slide and turning it into Python code. Starting here at octave zero, the B note is a frequency of 31, and you can see all the pairs here, all the way up to a D sharp in the eighth octave with a frequency of 4978. Here's the circuit we'll use for our project in part one. We'll get our Pico here on the breadboard, and we'll put our buzzer. And then they have those two little legs. Uh, often the top of it, they'll have a little marking for uh, the positive side of the buzzer, and that'll be the pin that we'll want to connect up into a GPIO pin on our Pico, and then we'll connect the other pin to ground. Our final slide before we actually start doing some coding and uh, playing some buzzer music with our circuit. Um, it probably helps to know a little bit about how to read music. Um, so this will be a very short uh, intro to that, hopefully enough to help you get started. Um, but I definitely recommend um, maybe looking a little bit about how to read music um, to learn more if, if this isn't enough for you. Um, usually most, uh, most uh, sheets of music will have something like this where they have a treble and a bass clef, two different kinds of music, but the melody is usually on the treble. So we'll focus on that, looking at the notes, where they're lined up on these lines or spaces in between the lines, tells you what note you have. So you can see here, all the notes here on the lines are given to you, C, E, G, B, D, F, A, and C. And then the in between the lines is F A C E. Notice that spells face. Um, I remember this when I learned how to read music that this was every good boy does fine. So I could remember uh, what the notes were. The other thing you need to know about notes is they have different durations. Um, they can be a whole note, which takes a whole measure, and a half note, which takes half, a quarter, takes a quarter, eighth, and a sixteenth. So 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. And you'll see I'll use this as a way to code those durations when we make our buzzer music. And I should have pointed out when we were here, you can see I've, I've marked that this C is actually C in the 4 octave, E in the 4 octave. And then you notice as we get up to this C up here, we're up to the 6th octave, and this C is in the 5th octave. So this is most of the notes you'll see on a on a treble um, clef, but uh, you know, hopefully that's enough for you there. Now I picked up a piece of music that I think most of us know, Ode to Joy by Beethoven. This is the first opening line of that piece of music. Let's go ahead and transcribe Ode to Joy into our format for Python. We'll uh, start off with the first note, which is an A right here. It's the A4. We'll put a four in, and the note we have is a quarter note, so we'll put a four. And we have another one right after that, so a four quarter note. The next one is that pesky B, which is flat. So we know that the B flat is an A sharp, so we'll put a sharp in the fourth octave, also a quarter note. And then we come to the C, and that's the C five right here, and a quarter note. We'll go all the way through, until we get to this last measure here. And that one is also an A4, but it has the dot, remember, which says we need to take a little extra time. And how we'll do that is we'll take the quarter note and we'll divide it by 1.5. And that'll give us a little bit longer a note when we write our function to uh, play this out. You'll see how that works. Then we'll have the eighth note as a G4 right there and then another G, but it's the half note. So 
half note there. That's the first line to Ode to Joy, transcribed so that we can play it using our passive buzzer. Now we're ready to write some Python code so we can play music on our buzzer. We'll import machine and uTime library, and we'll set up our buzzer. Uh, we'll have it on GPIO 7 using the pulse width modulation uh, function here in the machine library. Then we're going to create a function to play notes. Um, I adapted this from the SunFounder Pico kit. Uh, so we'll call it Tone. We'll give it the pin that the buzzer is connected to. Um, then we'll provide the frequency and duration. So you can see that's important as we transcribed our, uh, our Ode to Joy. We um, said what note we wanted, which is connected to the frequency in our dictionary. And then the duration will come um, from whether we put a quarter note or an eighth note or so forth. Um, so we'll set up the frequency we're going to need. Uh, then uh, we'll set the duty cycle. So this, this uh, duty U16 function could be uh, all the way from zero to over 65,000. Um, so we'll set it halfway in between that so that we get a duty cycle of 50%. Then we're going to hold the note. Um, so that kind of turned it on. We'll hold the note for the duration. Then we'll turn it off. Then we're going to sleep just a teeny tiny amount to create a break in between notes as we play them. Next we'll set up a function for rest. So sometimes there are rests in music and we need to create a space where nothing is playing. So that's what the rest will do. And we'll just give it the pin and how long we want to rest and not play anything. And then next we'll write a function to play an entire song. So this is going to be in that format that we transcribed the Ode to Joy in. I call that a paired tuple list format. And we'll give it the pin and the song. That'll be that list of all the um, notes and durations. And then I created a variable called tempo, which allows us to change the speed at which the song is playing back. You'll see how that works. So we're going to loop through um, the, the notes and the frequencies in the song. I'm printing to them to the screen uh, here uh, just so we can see uh, as it goes along. We can see what notes playing and for how long. Um, eventually we'll want to comment this out because we don't need that coming to the shell all the time. And then if the note is a rest, we'll use the rest function. If it's otherwise, it's a tone, and we'll use the tone function. And here's where we'll uh, call up the frequency from the notes dictionary. We'll get the frequency that's associated with the uh, note that we wanted, and we'll uh, create an integer from the division of the tempo and the note a duration that we put. So a quarter note or a half note. And you can see a half note's going to take longer because we're going to divide by a smaller number than a sixteenth note. Um, we'll divide by a larger number and cause it to be a shorter duration. So that's how that works. Next up is that dictionary that we created. So we can reference all the frequencies and notes. And then we'll put our Ode to Joy transcription in here. Then our uh, our loop is pretty simple here. Or, or try and accept, I should say. There's no loop. We're going to play the song on the buzzer pin. We're going to give it Ode to Joy. And this is the tempo um, that I found sounded good. And we can play with that after we try it a couple times. Time to give this a run. And I've moved the mic a little bit, so probably sounds a little different because I put it over closer to the buzzer. Hopefully it'll, you can hear the buzzer a little bit better. Um, so we'll see how this sounds. And we'll go ahead and play it. Yeah. Well, that certainly sounds pretty good. Now we can play with the tempo. Let's uh, take it down to a thousand and try that. Ooh, fast. Probably a little too fast. But uh, let's try it at a little slower, two thousand. Yeah, that's a little too slow. So that's why I ended up at 1500 and I found you just kind of have to 
play with the tempo a little bit. Starting at about a thousand is a good place to start, and then you know tweak it up and down till you get the speed that uh, sounds good to you. Well, we've got Ode to Joy, but wouldn't it be fun to have some other nice uh, tunes to play on our buzzer? Let's add a few more. So now we're going to add more songs to our uh, repertoire of buzzer music. And uh, I'm going to put them all in a separate file. So we're going to import that file, songs.py, and here it is. Let's take a look. Um, so here's the code for the songs. And uh, I uh, got some of these uh, from other people who've made some buzzer music. And so uh, I uh, indicate where it came from if um, I borrowed it from somebody. So Star Wars theme is a pretty nice one and uh, also picked up Game of Thrones theme. Um, this one came from Hackster.io, Take Me On, a good old song from a while back. Uh, this is the famous Star Trek intro. And uh, this is where our, those, uh, first time I saw the dotted notes uh, approach, um, I used a slightly different approach than uh, Robson uh, did, but uh, uh, got the idea for that from him. Uh, then uh, Harry Potter um, theme. That's actually a pretty long one. And then I uh, I happen to love Jimmy Buffett, and so I had a copy of Margaritaville sheet music, so I transcribed the verse, the chorus, I mean, of Margaritaville. And then we have our Ode to Joy. So that's a pretty good number of songs to choose from and gives us a chance to uh, test it out. In this version of our song player, we'll uh, import the songs uh, so we can access them so they're kind of separate from our program. And you'll see we have all the same uh, code that we had previously. And uh, come down here into the try accept and we have all the different songs set up and I just have the one I want to play currently uh, uncommented and all the rest commented out. Now you could choose to have them play one after the other, or whatever you'd like to do there. Now when we get into part two, we're going to handle this uh, much more, much nicer. We're going to have kind of a menu system um, with an OLED to uh, choose the song we want to play. So for now, we're just going to play them kind of one at a time and comment and uncomment. Let's try a couple of them. Let's try the Star Wars theme. That's ever popular. There we go. <laughs> and that one had a rest in it. You might have seen that go by. So um, let's try, well, we're going to try my Margaritaville one since uh, that's one of my favorites. And uh, see how that sounds. Yeah, there we go. So it works pretty well. So our, as I said, in our next episode, we're going to add an OLED screen, some buttons, and create a menu system so that we can really have kind of a jukebox where we can see the different uh, songs that we have to choose from. We can scroll through them and select one to play. Looking forward to seeing you in part two. Thanks for joining me.